Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I got another engineering fail for you guys or something that is a little bit more complex than it should be. And uh, if you guys haven't figured it out yet, it's going to be a GM product and this is part of it right here, these uh, bottles. So with that said, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below. Definitely smash that like button because it helps the channel out. And with that said, let's go ahead and get started on today's video. So right next to me are three bottles of fluid that go into one differential. And yes, if that sounds crazy to you, if it sounds not so normal, that's because it is. Now, typically you'll have something small like a friction modifier that goes with your gear oil, which is perfectly fine. We've been doing that for years. But then you also have an oil for the clutch packs, which is a separate part of the differential. And this is a over complicated engineering feat that I don't think it's necessary. It's going to be more expensive in the future for owners of these vehicles. And I see this being an issue. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and look at this monstrosity. I got the car in the lift behind us. Uh, these are GM vehicles with 2.0 turbos and they have all wheel drive systems um, ranging from the years of like, I think 2008 up until like current year, 2024, uh, probably even longer than that. Now this video may not be out till 2025 as a heads up. But uh, right now we are pretty much, uh, you know, at the end of the year here. But uh, let me go ahead and lift this car up and explain everyone why this is an engineering fail in my book and why it's so overcomplicated and why this can be a disaster for future owners as these vehicles age. So we have our vehicle in the air. Now we can clearly see we have our engine, we have our transmission, and we have our power takeoff unit or PTO, AKA transfer case. Now they at least got this right. Uh, they give you a drain. Uh, which is right back here and a fill which is right up there so that's great standard all-wheel drive service stuff you know now we move back here and this is where it be becomes a little bit fun now I'm gonna try to get everyone here in the perfect angle try to give everyone the best light and uh, pretty much show everyone why this is uh, catastrophic now let me go ahead and get some lighting up here so we can all see this now this is basically the all-wheel drive system that I was just referencing and uh, we got our PTO which is up front that way we have our drive shaft that comes in here and this is our rear differential now this is the reason why we need three fluids we have a clutch side here which is electronic which basically turns this differential on and off because it's an all-wheel drive system and then we have our gear set uh, side of it now the gear side of it not really anything to rant home about standard gear fluid friction modifier mix not a bad deal you got your fill here you got your drain here although i will say if you guys look at this uh, fill port it's high but it's at a weird angle uh, i don't know if everyone can see that it's pretty difficult to uh, fill up the fluid on there but anyway that's just a small feat you can easily overcome that with a pump but what I want to talk to everyone today is just the way that they want you to service these. Now, first of all, we live in the Rust Belt here. Um, the way this works is this clutch set side basically turns the all-wheel drive on or off. If you need the rear wheels to engage, it clicks into place via a control module, which is right here. And then we also have the pump, which is located right here underneath the control module. Now, as far as the pump, I mean... I don't know about you guys, but here in the Rust Belt, this is the pump right here. That's the controller. You can see we're getting some pretty good rust on there. Uh, I don't understand why the controller is underneath the car. I would think that would want to be inside, especially since it's a computer. And uh, down here where it can get hit and it sits pretty low is not the best idea. That's one whole engineering uh, fail, I guess you can say, on this on top of uh, the rest of it. But this pump is also pretty low. You could hit this, break it. And then you're in trouble plus the fact that it's rusting up this body could start leaking fluid eventually that's another whole thing where i see this going bad um, plus to service it you got a drain or not even a drain more like a check uh, port which is located right up here and then the only way for you to be able to fill up that fluid and let me take everyone here from a deep dive see that hose i don't know how well you guys are going to see it but it's Right there, that's the vent hose. The only way to fill it up is to remove that hose, insert your own tube, and basically pump the fluid into the, as you say, the clutch side of it. And then basically uh, with that plug off on this side, let it basically uh, run out until it stops and then you know basically plug it up. Um, very complicated procedure, very tight quarters. 
Um, I don't know why they're engineering stuff like this. This to me is a throwaway system. Now this is a European system because on this computer it says Haldex. So I'm assuming this came off of some European car design or some European designer, maybe even possibly from Holden because I know GM and Holden were you know, pretty much together for a few years. So I don't understand where the design comes from. Now one typical failure point on these uh, that apparently is apparent, I've never seen it because I don't get these that often, but it is a true thing. So basically uh, aside from the computer possibly failing or the pump, or the clutch pack in here from the engagement and disengagements. Uh, what can also happen is in between here, these are connected via a spline and their seals. Apparently this can push its fluid in the differential and you wouldn't know that it's leaking or anything because there's no tell. Now there is a little uh, divot here. Maybe it'll leak fluid out of there and tell you, but not exactly sure how that works. Uh, kind of like the old school transmissions, pushing fluid into transfer cases. Nothing really new there. That's always been around and that's not really a new thing on this, but it's just another thing that could go wrong and that's a common failure point. Uh, this to me is just a disaster to say the least. I mean, it's not that great of a system. I'm sure it works great, but when it fails, I'm sure it's going to suck for your wallet. Um, this is pretty much why I hate it. Now, I've serviced this already. This customer wanted a service. He read about it. They, he knows they're problematic. I told them I'll service it, but they're, you know, just FYI, they're very frugal systems, uh, so be careful. You know, uh, I don't want to get blamed if something were to happen in like 10,000 miles or something, because all we're doing is doing uh, fluid swaps. Now, overall, inside there wasn't that much wear. There are magnets on this uh, gear set side, and you know, it didn't look bad. It actually looked pretty good in there. And if anyone wants to see me service this, I will have a video up. I don't know if I'm gonna drop this video first and then the repair videos. But if you look on my channel, you should be able to find me servicing this as a whole. And you can pick and choose whether you want to service the clutch side or the gear side. We did both. So, you know, that way you know what's all involved in it. And like I said, it's not really a whole complicated thing, but I don't see a DIY doing this in their garage or home. It can be a little bit complex and a little bit scary, um, especially how you fill up this guy. The gear set is pretty easy nothing to really rave home about but this whole thing here has its own little procedures and everything which you know uh, can be a little bit uh, scary to say the least even though they're not that complex um, so i don't know what gm was thinking with this and that's just where i'm going to leave it at that so that is a uh, gm marvelous engineering fail in my book uh, clearly the way they designed it and the way the upkeep is and the serviceability and the potential for issues is just really high on this. Now, I'm not saying this is horrible or anything of that sorts. These are solely my opinions. Um, what I always try to do is put myself in the shoes of a vehicle owner. Uh, and in this particular case, if I own this vehicle, if let's say I want to make it last about 15, 20 years without having issues, I just don't see that possible with this uh, subsystem of all wheel drive on there. It just doesn't really make sense. Especially here in Chicago where we live. I mean, we get a lot of snow, we get a lot of ice. We have plow trucks that will clear the snow and then, you know, ice falls off the blades and sometimes you'll have a nice little meteor of ice on the road. And uh, imagine this car driving past that and hitting it and it going straight directly down the center, hitting that computer or that pump. That's going to create an issue. So at least here for me, if I were to own this car, it's not feasible to get, you know, the longest life out of this thing without having issues. I see it as very problematic. And that's where my opinion comes from. Now, if you own one of these cars and, you know, they're the greatest things and sliced bread for you, again, I'm not knocking the car or GM. It's not just GM that does this. Uh, it's every manufacturer out there. They do some form of stuff like this nowadays. So, you know, please, if you own one of these cars and you love it and you think it's the best thing ever, don't go in the comments and talking trash. Uh, I'm not really saying anything about the car itself is just the, the way that they did things and uh, at the end of the day we're all human we can all have our opinions and to me for the reasons that I just said is why this is the engineering fail or flop in my book and I really wouldn't want to ever own one of these things with uh, this problem which is kind of a uh, Kind of a sad thing because these two liter turbos that GM makes, I mean, on top of them already having their own problems, uh, they're quite spunky. I mean, these things make some power. It's not the most high horsepower thing out there, but it's pretty zippy for the streets, which is, you know, a much needed thing. Like, I love driving them. They are quite quick. 
But uh, that'll pretty much cover this video, guys. Uh, hopefully you found this educational or you found it entertaining. So like always, comment, like, and subscribe because it definitely helps the channel grow. I hope everyone has a wonderful day, and I'll catch you on the next video.